meeting will now come to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City of Romulus City Council regular meeting for Monday, August 4th, 2014. And the roll will show that all members are present. Um, tonight's council meeting agenda is as follows. Number one agenda, two minutes, three petitioner, four chairperson's report, five mayor's report, 6A clerk's report, 6B treasurer's report, seven public comment, unfinished business, nine new business, 10 communication, and 11 adjournment, and a motion would be in order to accept the agenda as presented. So moved. Support. In motion by Ms. Makowski, supported by Mr. Kraut, for approval of the agenda as presented. Ms. Makowski. Yes. Mr. Kraut. Yes. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Ms. Cho. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Chair votes yes, agenda approved. Number two, approval of the minutes from the regular meeting held on July 28, 2014. So move for July 28, 2014. Support. Motion by Mr. Wadsworth, supported by Ms. Abdo, for approval of the minutes from the regular council meeting held July 28, 2014. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Abdo. Yes. Ms. Cho. Yes. Ms. Kraut. Yes. Ms. Kowski. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. There are no petitioners on the agenda tonight. Number four is the chairperson's report. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, today, earlier at 6 o'clock, we had a study session uh, to discuss city policies and procedures. At 7 o'clock, we had a study session to discuss the city scorecard. And uh, at this time, I'd like to bring up uh, Michael Hayes. In the audience is Michael Hayes in the audience. All right, good evening. Good evening, good evening. Mr. Mayor. Uh, what I'd like to bring up is that, once again, I am representing the Commons 2 subdivision. And we're at that point where we want to have our annual picnic for the, uh, uh, for the subdivision. I'm asking for permission. Now what we're going to do is we're going to block off the same street that we've been blocking off, which is a side street off the main thoroughfare. The street is Hampton. Uh, everyone's welcome. Come on out, support us. Have a good time with us. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we issue, a, again, a no-fee permit, but you're going to have to supply us with the information to the clerk's office, the dates and the times. But, okay, you've done it, this, it, it but you guys have done 16. this in the past, and there's been no problem. Right. 16 from 11 to 7. Support that motion. Okay. It's been motioned by Mr. Wadsworth, supported by Ms. Mikowski, for a no-fee permit. Mr. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Mikowski? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. For me? Yes. Permitted. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, next, I'd like to bring up uh, Mr. Mr. Jones. Mayor, Mr. Barton, Council. I'm David Jones uh, of St. John's Lodge Number 44, uh, Free Deceptive Masons, Prince Hall affiliated. Malcolm Williams is our worshipful master. I have with me also Mr. Ezell Wooden. I'm here to push and promote our Youth Day. We have in August the 23rd. This is a Youth Day. This is a day where we get together and we give school supplies to the youth in the community. 
We have the uh, games. We have participation from the police department, fire department. And this year, it will be the DPW going to have a tug of war. Uh, they're going to have a tug of war. And it's going to be a very joyful, enjoyable day for, our, for the youth. And we're asking that the city support us, which you have done in the past tremendously. Uh, last year, we gave school supplies to over 400 kids. This year, we want to make it even better. We are growing. My goal is to make this the biggest one in Wayne County. But we never, it won't be anything unless we get to see, uh, our city support. And we're asking you to continue to support us. And I just want to make it uh, on, every, on everybody's mind of this day that's coming up. Uh, you. Uh, uh, August the 23rd, it'll be starting at noon uh, to 5. We have a little, we have a program. We have different speakers. Our mayor here come up and give his encouraging words if he's available. And uh, we have flyers out. If you need any, if there's any questions, you can get a hold to me at 734-765-8630. Uh, 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 so we're looking forward to see you there and for everyone to enjoy themselves, to bring your, your children out. Uh, and we take, we have a souvenir book going out because uh, this is our 25th year. So we want to make this a very outstanding event. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones and Mr. Wooten. Before I step down, we step down, I would just like to say good afternoon to the mayor and the entire city council for putting up with us and helping us out and making us feel welcome to do what we do in Romulus. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Thank you for doing Mr. Chair, yes, I have to say something. Actually, we want to thank you for doing what you do for the community. It's much appreciated. You make a difference. That's right. The next thing I'm going to say is probably, I better say it anyway, today is my wife's birthday. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just want to wish her a happy birthday and she's out of town, but uh, I'm glad that uh, she's happy, so thank you. <laughs> glad that she's gone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lemons. Thank you. Uh, Next, I'd like to bring up uh, a person that really has a, a really important message for everyone. And uh, her name is uh, November Taylor. Would you come up, Ms. Taylor? Good evening, everyone. Not the best of public speaking, but I'll try. Okay. Um, I'm November Taylor with Maternal Med. And it's a company that my husband and I own. Um, we service Wayne, Oakland, and Washtenaw counties. Uh, we provide services to women and infants who have or qualify for Medicaid. Our goal is to reduce infant mortality and morbidity by providing them with educations, resources, referrals to the community, and baby items. Um, there's a large amount of children that are dying every day from lack of parenting skills and love and nurturing, so we're trying to reduce those numbers. Um, we are having a diaper drive um, through August, and people can drop off diapers to our location or we can pick them up. Um, and we're not only keeping them for our own office because a lot of our young women need diapers, uh, we are giving them also to Focus Hope Tears program uh, and they supply breastfeeding uh, education in doulas and Destiny and Purpose in Washtenaw County. Uh, my husband and I go out early in the morning, we reach out to the community. Um, this past weekend we went out into the Romulus communities over off Eureka and we're just really trying to reach these young women and let them know that there is support, but more so the infants that can't defend themselves or feed themselves, we're trying to help them. So um, if you guys have any questions, brochures and diaper drive announcements. So. Any, any questions, Ms. Malkowski? Can you give your phone number, your contact, so people oh, can yeah. send you all sorts of good things? My phone number at the office is 734-207-0136. And also toll free is 855-298-9411. Mr. Barton? Yes, Mr. Wadsworth. If the public wants to drop these items off, where do they take them, I guess, is the question. Okay. Our office is 5860 
North Canton Center Road, and it's in Suite 325. That's in Canton, 4187. Um, and also, you guys can call us, and we can also do pickup. Okay, thank you. Great. Mr. Chairman, can we yes. have her leave her information with the clerk and make sure everyone up sure. here gets it so we can fan that information out? Great. Thank Great. you. Yes. Perfect. With that, that uh, concludes the chairman's report. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, Ms. McCall. I would like to um, move that we accept your report. Support. In motion by Ms. Mikowski, supported by Ms. Roscoe, to accept the chairperson's report. Ms. Mikowski? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you. And number five is the mayor's report. Good evening, uh, council and clerk and audience. Um, under my report tonight, I always start off with a quote. This one's from Abe Lincoln. Most folks are as happy as they make their minds up to be. And um, uh, with that, that my tie-in to that is that we have our uh, vision process, which I'm very happy with. It's been going very well. Uh, we do have a big event coming up. It's actually uh, uh, Wednesday. There's a public hearing at the RAC from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, this is a great opportunity for residents. Uh, to participate in the vision of their community and where they want it to go. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work. We've had uh, small groups. We've had a kind of a vision team that's been working on this. There's been phone calls that have been made internally in our city uh, from the outside in. Uh, this is a great opportunity for the public to be a part of that process to kind of hear what we've done so far and where we plan to go. So that's this Wednesday. If you can make it, uh, 5.30 to 7.30, if you make part of it, show up uh, and, and take part in what's going on in our community and where we want the community to go. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to invite up uh, Pastor Cindy Gibbs from Community United Methodist Church uh, and like her to talk a little bit about their mini missions project that they have going on, that we had uh, some awesome youth here today passing out flowers. Thank you very much, guys. So, Pastor, would you please come up and just tell a little bit about uh, what your youth group is doing? Good evening. Good evening, Pastor. Good evening. The mini missions program is something we started actually just two weeks ago, and it's a four-week program for right now with hopes of maybe becoming something that will be ongoing um, later in the year. I, we hope you enjoyed our collection of smiles this evening. Um, we had a couple of people say, well, I don't have any money, and that wasn't the point. We were just collecting smiles. Uh, next week, we do want to collect some money. Um, <laughs> Our first project two weeks ago was to make fly swatters. We made them out of plastic canvas and yarn, and um, they actually will work. Um, our purpose with that is to sell the fly swatters for donations, and the money will go toward um, a program called Imagine No Malaria, and that is a program that provides bed nets, treated bed nets, to uh, protect people from mosquitoes as they sleep. And um, malaria is just a terrible problem problem in Africa, and so that's where our money goes to buy the bed nets. Um, in the past several years, I don't know the exact number of years, the mortality rate from malaria has dropped from one every 30 seconds to one every 60 seconds. The United Methodist Church is aiming to bring that farther down. I'm from the United Methodist Church. Our children are kind of from all over. so. We will be back next week with your permission and hope that you will support that project. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank, Thank you. you Pastor. Give them a round of applause for their Thank smiles. A uh, couple of things, point of information before I get into my uh, business report. Uh, working hard on Fernandez Park. Uh, Fernandez Park, uh, uh, we were out there just end of last week. I'm hoping council to have uh, some kind of reopening in another week from now, uh, it's looking good. Uh, there are a few other finishing touches we want to put on that, but uh, that's uh, our next uh, big accomplishment to getting parks back. I can tell you it was really neat when we were out there with the team Friday afternoon. Uh, I mean, there were kids out there playing basketball and talking, so we were asking about some of their input for you know their park and encouraging them to take ownership of their park. And uh, yeah, I mean, basically we've just cut it and done a few things around there, and people are already coming into those parks. So I think it's positive. Our intent is to have a sustaining plan to keep those open. Um, you know, I don't know that we can open every park, but we're trying creatively to do that. Um, 
I also have a request into the schools to allow us to kind of adopt or take over that little park next to Mount Pleasant. Um, they have a very active little league across the street and it's pretty much another park that the schools unfortunately had to, to abandon when the school closed. So we're looking, if they approve that, we're gonna also try to get that one on our list as well too. So working hard and heavy on parks and uh, hope to have a specific date for council and the public on when we're gonna rededicate that. Um, another comment I just wanna make, you know, we have the Goddard Road project going on. That's the good news, we're fixing roads. Um, the, the plea to the public and to council is that we do need to remember that the businesses downtown are still open. Um, it is a disruption, you know, coming in from the east to the west because of the road construction. We pledged to try to keep one lane of traffic open. Um, that worked well until CSX closed the railroad uh, crossing a week ago, but that's open again now and been repaired. But if, uh, if you're at home and you're listening to this or uh, you're talking to people, uh, it's, you know, the, the downtown area could use your extra support right now, so please try to get down there. Uh, businesses are being impacted. We're trying to communicate uh, every week with what's going on with the road progress. It's making good progress. Uh, we're working with the businesses on signage and detours. Uh, unfortunately, when there's a lot of road projects, it does cause disruption, but uh, they're moving ahead, um, full steam ahead, and it's going well, but just want to put that plug in. That. If, if, if you're thinking, uh, boy, I don't want to drive past because there's barricades or it's a hassle, don't think that at all. Please, the businesses need you. They're open. Uh, if we don't support them, then they won't be here when we need them. So please uh, try to support all the downtown businesses. Um, a downtown uh, activity that's coming up that I wanted to put a plug in for. Um, I think it's been a success. We brought back the sounds of downtown. Um, there are a couple things going on this Friday. We have the uh, Rusty Wright Band. Uh, it's rock and blues kind of music, 7 to 9 this Friday. Free music, folks. Come down, enjoy. Um, they... Uh, they just extended uh, the sixth concert, which is August 22nd. Um, Boogie Dynamite, they're called. They play everything from um, Bee Gees type stuff to Black Eyed Peas to a variety of music, a very popular group. Uh, the, you know, we've had uh, uh, the Rotary Club stepped up in a big way and helped to sponsor uh, this additional uh, concert that's coming up. Um, there's um, also a quick update on our uh, market uh, that's going on on Wednesdays. As you know, we had a farmer's market last year in the downtown area. It's moved out next to 34th District Court. And uh, actually starting uh, this week, uh, that uh, Kurtzel's Vegetable Farm is gonna have produce there. So rather than drive all the way uh, uh, over to the other side of town, you could stop right here next to the 34th District and pick up uh, vegetables and produce, as well as we have a lot of other vendors there that are from cookies to ice cream to uh, other products as well. So please come and support that. Uh, that's uh, this Wednesday, and I think it's noon till 4, the, the time on it. Um, so good things going downtown, but please uh, please come and try to support some of those activities. Um, another real positive, I got a chance, and, um, and I know uh, Rose Swedan is here in the audience, our uh, Director of Senior Services, and um, we had the uh, opening ceremony that I got a chance to go to um, uh, this last, last week, Monday. Uh, we were very well represented. Uh, it was hosted by the city of Taylor uh, in their pavilion. Uh, some of the activities were outside, some were inside. Uh, but I was very proud of the turnout that we had uh, to kick off that. They started off like traditional Olympics with a ceremony. Uh, they have their activities going all week. Then they have their big banquet uh, and kind of celebration, grand celebration, like a kind of a closing. Um, and we had uh, 12 medals were won. We're gonna try to make sure we get all the names and the awards in the paper and out, recognizing all the seniors. And, uh, but it was very proud. We had the city of Romulus walk forward with our banner. Um, I think we had bigger cheers than any other, even the host community there. And we had a great group. They had a lot of fun. Uh, I'll just tell you one quick story. Um, it's uh, Mickey Durham. Mickey, um, it was her 24th senior Olympics and you know we hear senior Olympics and we think eh, okay senior Olympics they're off doing these you know activities um, well she said to me is this her exact word she said I live for this mayor this is a black she looks forward all year to 
getting together with their other communities in these Senior Olympics. So it's a big deal. Uh, so that, that Mickey spirit that, uh, that was shared uh, is shared with a lot of uh, folks that just had a great time. And, and I want to thank Rose for uh, her efforts and her team. Uh, it went very well, and you'd be very proud. And we'll make sure that you get a copy of who won what awards and give them a pat on the back and thank them for their participation. Um, Mr. Barton, if I could yes. just ask the mayor, Mayor, is there a projective date when Goddard Road will be done, barring any problems? is the question I keep getting asked. Well, um, barring any problems, um, we, we, they've had a couple little bumps in the road. They, they hit a, a water valve, I, I uh, they hit a that. gas valve. The goal is to have it by fall for sure. They just recently though, were, uh, and I understand it'll probably be next week, we'll be bringing a change to the parade route for the light parade because it's not gonna be done in time for that. So uh, to avoid that, we're gonna, uh, we work with the Rotary and they're basically gonna be changing their route to go down uh, uh, Bibbins and cut over on Shook uh, because it most likely will not be done for the light parade. Okay, so fine. it's Thank still you. this fall. phase will be done uh, before fall. Um, the downtown area won't even start till next spring. Um, anyway, into my normal uh, business report. What I have up first is uh, 5A. What you have before you is a request to concur with the administration authorize an expenditure of $10,721 for repair of doors, uh, gutters, and purchase of replacement tables and chairs for the Ramos Progressive Hall, located at 11580 Osgood Road. And as council knows, those are funds that were earmarked from uh, corporate contributions to be allowed to help groups just like this. So moved, Mr. Chairman, for the Community Enhancement Program of the Ramos Progressive Hall. Support. There's been motion by Mr. Wadford, supported by Mr. Kraut. To concur with the administration authorized expenditures of $10,721 for repairs of doors, gutters, and the purchase of replacement tables and chairs at the Romans Progressive Hall located at 11580 Osgoode Road. Any discussion? Mr. Mr. Chairman, oh, go ahead. Just, just a quick comment, and I'm very uh, pleased to see that one of the vendors is a Romans vendor in, in it, and the other one is over in the city of Taylor, which is, this is a win win situation for everybody. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Oh, sorry. Oh, go Me first. Good go job, Progressive Hall. Okay, that's. I'm done. Your turn. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Why I, you know, we're trying to help Progressive Hall. We've helped some other groups and others, but um, they also have an event right this Saturday. Uh, Elvis will be in the house. Uh, what time is that? Six o'clock. The doors open. Seven o'clock. Uh, uh, Elvis will be there. So uh, that's again a fundraiser for their efforts. Uh, they do a lot of good in the community, just like St. John's Lodge and others, and they're, they're trying hard. So with uh, council's approval, hopefully tonight, and people coming out and supporting their events, uh, we can help them be a viable club. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Mr. Kraut. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Ms. Mikowski. Yes. Ms. Cho. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you, council. Uh, next up is 5B. What you have before you is a request to authorize the disposal of uh, one cascade compressor, uh, and that is, uh, and also one 7.5 RW generator uh, under the guidelines of the outdated and obsolete equipment policy. Uh, the sale to be completed through the pre-owned fire equipment dealer uh, at a 10% standard selling broker fee. Mr. Brought Chair. to you as a recommendation by Kevin Krause, our deputy fire chief. So. Um, I would like to make that motion that we authorize the disposal of one cascade compressor and one 7.5 RV generator under the guidelines of the outdated and obsolete equipment policy. Sale would be completed through the pre-owned fire equipment dealer at a 10% standard selling broker fee. Sorry. Motion by Ms. Choke, supported by Ms. Abdo, to authorize the disposal of one cascade compressor and one 7 0.5 RV generator under the guidelines of outdated and obsolete equipment policy. Sale to be completed through a pre-owned fire equipment dealer at 10% standard selling broker fee. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Ms. Choke. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Mr. Kraut. Yes. Ms. Mikowski. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Mr. Broke. Votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you, Council. Uh, next up is 5C. And what you have before you is a uh, asking for to adopt a resolution 
to support the Senior Alliance Annual Implementation Plan for Aging Services for the fiscal year of 2015. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Abdo. I'd like to make the motion to adopt the attached resolution in support of the Senior Alliance Annual Implement Implementation Plan for Aging Services for the fiscal year 2015. Support. Motion by Ms. Abdo, supported by Ms. Makowski to, to adopt the attached resolution in support of the <coughs> Senior Alliance's Annual Implementation Plan for Aging Services for fiscal year 2015 as presented. Any discussion? Hearing a roll call vote. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Ms. Mikowski. Yes. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Mr. Crowd. Yes. Ms. Choke. Yes. <clears throat> Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you, Council. Uh, next up is 5D. What you have is a request to concur with the administration and approve the proposed <clears throat> fiscal year uh, 2015 through 17 agreement between the City of Romulus and Wayne County, and that's to continue the Urban County program and make funds available for the Community Development Block Grant and Home Program. Mr. Chair, yes. I'll Ms. make Roscoe. that uh, motion to concur with the administration and approve the proposed fiscal year 2015 through 2017 agreement between the City of Romulus and Wayne County to continue the Urban County program and make funds available for community development block grant and home program. Support. Motion by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Choke. We concur with the administration to approve the proposed fiscal year 2015 to 2017 agreement between the City of Romulus and Wayne County, County to continue the Urban County program to make funds available for Community Development Block Grant and Home Program. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Mikowski? Yes. Mr. Crowd? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you, Council. Um, last item up is 5E. And it's just a request for a no-fee uh, park rental permit at Mary Ann Banks Park. Uh, and that's going to be on uh, Sunday, August 24th, uh, noon till 5 p.m. Uh, this is a, um, a kind of a joint effort with the Romulus Wesleyan Church and the Community United Methodist Church. Uh, they're going to be there at the uh, Mary Ann Banks Park uh, Pavilion area um, pending your approval. Yes, Ms. Abdo. I'd like to make the motion to authorize a no-fee permit, permit to the community. United Methodist Church, Mary Ann Banks Park, August 24th, 2014, from 12 to 5 p.m. for a block party with the neighboring community and the Romulus Wesleyan Church. Support. The motion by Ms. Abdo, supported by Ms. Mr. Kraut, for no fee permit rental for Community United Methodist Church and Romulus Wesleyan Church. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Mr. Kraut. Yes. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Ms. Mikowski. Yes. Ms. Cho? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you, Council. That concludes my report. 6A is the clerk's report. Under 6A1, for first reading and approval, um, are the amended policies and procedure numbers um, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 14, 20, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 33. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Ms. Cho. I would like to say thanks to the group who, who completed this work. They, they've worked, they've met every week, almost every week since December, worked very hard on this project to uh, complete and amend the uh, amended policy and procedures for the uh, city employees. And those policies are as listed as uh, Ms. Craig Bragg just uh, mentioned. Support. Motion by Ms. Chokes, supported by Ms. Roscoe, for first reading and approval of amended policies and procedures that was mentioned. Ms. Choke. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Mr. Wadsworth. Yes. Ms. Mikowski. Yes. Mr. Crowd. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. 6A2 for first reading is part two of the Romulus Ordinance Chapter 1 General Provisions Section 1 15 General Penalty. 
Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, Ms. Wachowski. I move uh, that we approve the first reading of Part 2, Romulus Ordinance, Chapter 1, General Provisions, Sections 1 through 15, General Penalty. Support. Motion by Ms. Makowski, supported by Mr. Wadsworth for first reading, Part 2, Romulus Ordinance, Chapter 1, General Provisions, Sections 1 through 15, General Penalty. Ms. Makowski? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. And Mr. Chair, uh, before I close out on my report, I'd just would like to remind everyone about tomorrow. Tomorrow is Election Day. And the polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8. And I would really like to challenge all of our residents uh, by bringing a friend, bring a re relative, bring a neighbor um, for voter participation. Uh, let's encourage everyone to come out and vote tomorrow. Uh, this is a primary election, which means um, our ballot, which it's a partisan ballot. So when voting, you have to vote straight party, uh, Republican and Democrat. It's a two-sided ballot. The first column, it, uh, you will, it's listed uh, the Republican candidates. Second column will be your Democratic uh, candidates. And your third column will be your nonpartisan and your um, proposals listed there. Um, also, we just want to let everyone know with regards to absentee ballots, today was the last day at 4 o'clock for us to issue was the deadline uh, absentee ballots. However, if there is an emergency uh, or a sudden illness or death in a family which will prevent you from attending uh, the polls tomorrow, um, you can be issued a uh, an emergency absentee ballot up until 4 o'clock, but you must contact the clerk's office and uh, there's a special application um, that has to be filled out. So again, everybody come out and vote tomorrow. Um, this is an important election. It's usually a smaller turnout, but uh, I think the primary elections, these midterm elections are probably more important than the presidential election and those big elections. So please, please, please tomorrow come out and and attend the polls. Uh, one more reminder, if uh, for those who are in Precinct 12, uh, your precinct has moved from Merriman School to the RAC. So everything is all set up and uh, again, thank you for everyone, DPW and all the support. And that concludes my report. Okay, thank you. Number 6B is the Treasurer's Report, which she is still on vacation. And number seven is public comment. And this is a portion of our meeting where those in the audience um, wishing to address co uh, council with your comments, this is your opportunity to do so. If you would like to address council, raise your hand. After you've been acknowledged by our chairperson, approach the podium. We ask that you state your name and that you limit your comments to three minutes. And we do not have any uh, written uh, requests at this time. Are there any other comments from the audience? Yes. Mm -hmm. My name is Sorella Darkins. Y'all know me. I'd like to address Miss Allen Craig Braggs. I didn't appreciate you coming appreciate you coming to my grandson's son, uh, funeral trying to make a political thing out of it. You didn't uh, give the family your condolence when they were here, so why go out of your way? You too, Mr. Barton, okay? Another thing, the harassment with these cops. Y'all gonna have to do something about it, quick. Damn, y'all dumb looking. Y'all ain't got nothing to say? Is that all? Okay. Any other comments? Ms. Walker? Oh, then, then, then you got there. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Ms. Walker. My name is Sharon Walker. Um, I hadn't, um, I didn't know whether anyone else uh, had uh, done it. But um, Mrs. Evelyn Hopewell, my neighbor, passed away. And uh, she was one of the teachers, uh, in fact, she was the nurse up at the, up at the high school. And um, I would like to have a memorial resolution for her and her yes. uh, family. Ms. Walker, uh, 
Miss Roscoe, she got some information. She gonna, she gonna I, give a I'm resolution. Gonna, underneath okay. that. But I can do it now. Yeah. If okay. it's okay. You wanna do it? Sure. Um, if I, I would like to make, make a motion for Thank a you, moral Wall. resolution for uh, Reverend Evelyn Hopewell. She passed away on July 24th. Very, very special lady. Um, she, w where I first met her was in the high school. She was my daughter's um, health occupation teacher. And I think if it wasn't for her, uh, my daughter wouldn't be doing the things that she's doing today. She's a very, very, very good lady. She taught her students as if they were her family. But um, Ms. Hopewell leaves behind her three daughters and her husband, Mr. Hopewell, John Hopewell, and four grandchildren, which I know they're gonna miss her very, very much. But you know, going through all our things, I knew Mrs. Hopewell was involved in a lot of things within Romulus, um, but reading over everything, um, she was a Girl Scout leader. She uh, started um, Christian Education Department and the Parks Memorial AME Church. Uh, she uh, organized a Bible school there. Um, she uh, I think I said she was a Girl Scout leader there. But uh, anyway, she was worked in, in the health occupation field for over 33 years, but the <coughs> main place I knew her from was with the high school and the way she was with the students there. But I know she's going to be very missed by very, very many people. Um, and I just would uh, really like my sympathy to go out to the family and, and especially your daughters and her husband. I'll support that, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Choke for memorial resolution for Reverend Evelyn Hopewell. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Mikowski? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Mr. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair, Chair Bo's yes. Motion approved. No, any other comments? Okay. You're doing, I'm Willis Black. This isn't much of a comment, it's more of a question. I was just wondering, have we started to, as far as the police department goes, have we started to game plan something out yet? Yes, Mr. Mayor, you wanna answer? Yeah, what I can do is, if, uh, under unfinished business, I'll uh, ask Director Leacher to come up and comment on any progress that we've had. But uh, he he did review all the information from last meeting, and we're going to be trying to do everything we can to address. We haven't heard anything from the state police, I believe. Okay. But I'll have him try to address some things tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll be back to uh, check up on the progress, see how we progress and everything like that, because this is a real issue and uh, I'd like to see it dealt with. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes. Hello, oh, Council. Um, what I'm about to say, I mean no disrespect to the mayor, the police department, Mr. Gibson, and Stacy, but she's not here. Um, I'm kind of appalled at um, First off, what happened last week at the meeting as I sat home? Just want to let you know and the family know that I am the father of one of the KKK Gestapo take advantage thug that carries a gun and has a badge here in the city of Romulus. And I was appalled at the fact that nobody up there defended the police department at all. I have no idea what happened on Belleville, on Beverly Road, and I, I can't comment on what happened, what that police officer did. But I found that very disrespectful that everybody sat up there and just as the lady just said right now, last week they talked about respect. Excuse me. You're gonna say something now? And she didn't, you didn't say anything to her. Okay, whether it was today, last week or whatever. Very disrespectful, very racial comments being made. I find that very offensive. All right, so that in, that in it's a fact. Okay. Okay, come on. No. Why don't you go no, no, no. Down? Wait, no just a minute. Oh. Really? Mr. Abdo, you have 
Question. Yes, I do have a comment. Um, during this time, it's public comment. We are here to listen to what you have to say. Okay. We are not going to get into an argument. We, you know, we listen to it, and I take. Most of us have taken notes and will follow through elsewhere. This is not the forum for me to argue with you. And I'm sorry that for some of the comments that were made. I know your son. He does a great job. He's a great officer. He works with our youth, and I, I couldn't ask for a better officer. Okay, and I, well, I can in, understand in, how that upsets you. Okay. Well, in their, in, their, in their defense, I sat up here and I listened to person after person come to the podium. The lady that's on the other side of town from the incident mentioned about how she needed police protection from fireworks and people shooting at her house and everything. She took it into her own hands. Instead of calling the police department to begin with to take care of it, she took it into her own hands and then needed the police department because they can't get there fast enough. Now they're the bad guys again. So I'm, I'm a little, I don't know if maybe the mayor, the police department, or somebody can let me know where, how does this work? I mean, how are they supposed to, I get a feeling that this whole city is playing the game of Jeopardy. Everybody's got, the, everybody knows the answer, but nobody knows what the question is. I don't get it. You, you, they stand, people stood up here and said that they want the people away from their storefronts. They have tires slashed, they do this, and then you send the police in to investigate or try to figure out what's going on, and something goes wrong, and they're the bad guys. They're called to maintain and protect and serve, and when they protect and serve, they get slandered, they, got, they put their lives on the line every single day. I challenge this young man to go on a ride along, if somebody will even take him in the police department now, and I hope that they would, but go on a ride along with these officers and get Mrs. Williams, she is. Get her in a police car. Make her ride the streets for a week straight on a night shift and see what these guys go through. Find out just how safe your city is. How many weapons they take off the street. How many guns they take off the street. And whatever that ha and however that happens, take it. You said he wanted to be a police officer. Do that. And I mean no disrespect from Mr. Gibson. I didn't know him at all. I was just appalled at the slander that the police department did. Okay. Is there a, will be some, any other comments? Okay, they, we usually come one time, but I let you come back up again. But normally it's just one comment. And uh, we, we, what we try to do is, I know if, if, if it's all okay, we try to uh, at least have a little bit of respect for, we want respect for you, and you know, we want to give you respect, and in, in return have respect for us. You may not like the, the people that hold office, but just kind of respect the office itself, because we're not going to disrespect you at all. Thank you. Okay. As far as the police department and slandering them and everything like that, uh, I apologize because every officer is not bad. I apologize to you, sir. And I don't mean to offend anybody, and I'm sure the family of Armani Gibson don't mean to offend anybody. We just want dealt with with the issue, okay? That's the only thing we want to deal with is the issue. And the issue is that some of the officers, not all of them, there is some good officers. I've met some. One of them gave me a ticket one day. <laughs> but there is some good officers, but we want dealt with the officers who are out here harassing people. That's it. If, if we come up with a game plan to just, you know, whatever the protocol might become or whatever, that's all I want done. That's the only thing I'm looking for. I don't mean to offend anybody else. I'm not trying to make any racist comments. If, that's, if that sets us back, if that pushes us behind what we need to get done, then I apologize. And I, and it, and I apologize for the, my friends and family. Please forgive me. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barton. Uh, Mr. Wadsworth. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant, respond. You know, to uh, Mr. Hain, you know, I worked this town for 13 years. And I, I worked afternoons, I worked midnights, I worked every corner of this town. And sometimes statements that appear to be very derogatory and inflammatory are better left alone in certain situations, trying not to inflame the situation that we're already in. I, I understand that. And you heard me defend the policeman. I, and I understand you heard that. me say that, that I thought there wasn't enough cops on the street. Enough staffing. All right. I and you also I heard me say that, that the public needs defense. respect. I did. I couldn't come to nobody's I did. defense that and night. I, and I, and I, I wasn't it. at the situation. We walked in here that night with something that we had 
no information other than a couple hours ahead of time. I understand. I that. was not to judge anything here. No. I understand that, okay. and I accept your apology. And would like to work with you and even get to know you. But what I would like you to also know is that my son can stop and play football at anybody at any complex, any place in the world. Stop, get out of his squad car, play football, play catch. Talk to him. Try to interact with the youth in his community, and he'll get just as many phone calls of people complaining because he did that. Ask the chief. He can pull over and go, and go up to an apartment complex, go outside and shoot basketball with a couple of kids for five minutes, and have 20 phone calls about why ain't you writing tickets? Why ain't you trying to find a guy that's slashing tires? That's what I'm trying to tell you that you don't understand. You need to get in that, you said last week, you need to get in that police car and understand what goes on. And I understand your loss. I, and I would also like to, Mr. Mayor, if you do ever decide to get into the stop chase policy, I want on that board. Because I lost a family member because they did not chase. They went to the house and waited for the kid. In the meantime, my brother-in-law was killed waiting for that, office, for that guy to show up. So this goes two ways. I understand your loss. I've been through your loss. But don't blame the cops for it all, this, all the time. Okay. But can I talk one more time? Well, come on. I'm going to talk after she says fuck off. Okay. Now, There's... you come in the wrong way with that. The, that uh, tire slashing, that happened a few days before all of this other stuff happened. They were looking for a female that, bust, that cut that man's tires. Talk to the police, they'll tell you. So my grandson was killed for no reason by a Romulus police. Okay. Are there any other comments? If not, uh, we'll close that part out. Number eight is unfinished business. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Ms. Mayor. I want to make a couple comments on, on you know, last week and, and tonight under uh, public comment, which is what it is, Mr. Chairman, um, that's the opportunity for our public to voice their consent, concerns. I think it's really important and it's healthy. Uh, last week we had a, uh, a lot of emotion, a lot of concern, and we heard everybody. There were a lot of notes that were taken. Probably the one thing I would encourage uh, anyone in, in any area, if it's not just public safety, is that we have uh, a process for complaints. We have a process for complaints with the police department, fire department. Uh, we have requests for complaints that come through my office. Um, I call the resident today that had an issue that uh, pertained to public safety. Uh, I call them that pertain to DPW. We want the feedback, but uh, the public comment part is not public debate. It's not elected official debate with comments. It's not question answer period. Uh, it's not for us to defend departments or defend each other. Uh, it's to hear the public. And from there, what we do is we go back and look at the facts. And we will get the facts in this case. We'll get the in facts on the report back from the state police. And it's really important that we make decisions on facts. Uh, but I think that, uh, and I encourage the public to come and give us your comments, but that part of the meeting is just for that. It's for comments. And just because we may sit here and listen to those comments and we're addressing things, uh, you know, and I, and I thank the chairman for making a comment about respect the office. Um, it, was a, it was a low point in our, in our city. I know there's a lot of emotions running high, um, and I know the chairman's intent was to let those emotions come out and let people express themselves, because I think that's very healthy for us to hear that. Uh, but don't assume that just because we're hearing you out uh, and, and not wanting to debate and engage and go back and forth, uh, I think the best thing is for us to do is hear those and then look at the facts and make intelligent decisions based on the facts. So uh, that's my, my comment on the, uh, the, the, the public uh, comment portion of the meeting. Uh, earlier it was uh, requested if there was any update. Uh, and, and I know we can't get into specific investigation, but I know that uh, uh, Director Leacher was gone last week. He was brought up to speed on the meeting that we had. And I would just ask if he, to address counsel if he could come up and, and just say a couple words of what he can say uh, from both the process last week and what we have uh, received as far as facts or we haven't received. So just to keep counsel aware of it because it is an important issue to all of us. Director Leacher. I think, Mayor. Counsel, Madam Clerk. 
Uh, just a, a couple of comments on the comments that were made at public comment. Um, one comment that was made was, uh, is there a game plan and, and what's going to be basically our, our, our protocol for moving forward? And if I can, I can address that, our, our protocol is, is pretty much the same as it's always been, and that's that um, our police department is open and honest, um, and, and we, we welcome and encourage feedback and, and input from, from our community. If you have issues, if you have complaints, um, Ms. Starkins uh, mentioned um, harassment by the police department. Um, any complaint that's come to us has been and is fully investigated. If there are still incidents that haven't been brought to our attention, Ms. Darkins, please see me after the meeting. Bring those to me. I want to know the specifics, officers that you're talking about, so we can look into this for you. I mean, that, that's our job, and, and, and we're, we're committed to doing that. Um, but the complaints need to be brought to us. Um, harassment complaints need to be brought to us. Um, every issue that was raised last week, um, I've, I've been debriefed by uh, uh, both Captain Shelby and Captain Monty on issues that, have, that they've both been working on since last week. Every single issue that was brought by every person last week has been personally addressed by Captain Shelby. He's in the process of gathering information on every single one of those issues personally that came as a result of the meeting last week. Um, what I can share with you and can tell you about the, the, the investigation up to this point is, is that the state police are investigating. Um, we are in touch with them on a very regular basis. It, it takes time. There's a lot to go through. It, 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 it may appear from a layperson standpoint that it should be cut and dry either from our side or from the community side, but it's not always that way. And, and this is one of those cases where you know, it's important to us uh, and I would hope would be important to the community as well that before we make any rush to any, any conclusions or rush to any judgment that we get all the facts and that an independent body be doing that investigation. The state police is doing that for us. We want to give them all the time that they need to make sure that they do a thorough and complete investigation. So we're, we're going to wait and we're going to ask for patience. Uh, we are in touch with them on a regular basis. As soon as there's information that we can share, we will share that information. Um, Again, with that, that same, uh, same note is, is we welcome input from our community. Um, this, is, this is your police department. This is, the, this is Romulus's police department. We're here to, to serve you, to protect you. That's, that's our goal. That's our job. That's job one for us. And we do that by forming partnerships and by forming relationships, and we want to do that. And Mrs. Darkins, again, I mean no disrespect to you, but I believe it was as unfair as it is for me to jump to snap to a judgment, I believe it's unfair of you to say that your son was killed by a Romulus police officer. I don't believe that that's a fair, that's a fair statement. I believe we need to let the, the, the investigation be done and see where that leads itself. But I believe that that's an unfair statement and, and, and that, wasn't, that wasn't right to say that to, about one of our officers. Thank you. Yeah, you can see him. He'll be, he'll be, see be him available, after. Mr. Chairman, after to address any yeah. other specific audience requests. Yeah. But that's all I had for unfinished business. Okay. Madam Clerk. Number nine is new business. Mr. Barton. Yes, Mr. Barton. If Washburn. I could, um, th this is d directed at Mayor Burkhoff, and it's going to be a compliment. Back when you uh, uh, took over in November, you talked about you were going to push for customer service friendly for the people. Um, the man, that, or my neighbor on Barford lives kitty corner from me, he had a problem with his water meter and I believe he got a bill of around $1,500 and he just lives there with two people. To make the, the long story short, they went out there and they put a new meter on and this gentleman changed every toilet, every, every faucet, everything he could and the meter, and even the brand new meter kept going around and around. Well, Somebody from the water department, I don't have his name, but we went out there, crawled up under the house and found a leak of one drop was causing the problem. And to make a long story short, I, I, he wants to compliment Jerry, and is it Gary, yes. that work in the water department. They worked with him, uh, they uh, came up with a payment plan, and he's quite thrilled about it. But he ended up, uh, in fact, he, they, uh, they told him to go call a plumber, the uh, other plumber wanted a thousand dollars, and I, I guess they told him here, but that was ridiculous. So him and his brother-in-law went out and bought the parts, and, and they fixed the thing for about a hundred bucks, and everything is good. And the water meter stopped going around. But you know, he was uh, very upset, and uh, anybody would, you know, be when they got a bill for fifteen hundred. And he spent like six weeks trying to 
stop it. He changed everything, and he would constantly complain to me about it. And we took care of him. I didn't take care of him, but I told him to come up here, and Jerry and Gary, they worked with him. He's got a payment plan, and he's quite thrilled. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wadsworth. I'll make sure we pass that on. I mean, um, we have good people in the city, that in all departments that are working hard. We're not perfect. We're our goal is to get better and better, but I'll make sure that they hear that feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Number 10 is communication. Mr. Chair, I do have some communication um, as it relates to elections. Um, historically, we've always provided um, unofficial results displayed on a bulletin board, uh, whether it be in this room or somewhere would display those. Um, with this type of election, because it is a primary election and it involves precinct delegates, so what happens is that every ballot style is different for that precinct because of the precinct delegate candidates. Um, and there has been some changes within Michigan uh, election laws of how we process uh, the precinct delegates as well as the AV counting boards. Uh, so for this election tomorrow night, it's going to take a little bit longer to get those results and make them uh, available. There's a lot of paperwork. So on top of what the state is requiring us to fill out, the county has their own requirements as well. So we will not have those results displayed um, here in the uh, council chambers. They will the following day be displayed down in the clerk's office, but we will be handing out reports, the results reports, because they're gonna kind of just trickle in. Um, and also we're working with cable so that the reports are televised. And I think we can reach more people with the results being on our cable channel. Um, but again, they will not be posted up uh, on you know, after the polls close tomorrow, and we will have those reports to hand out. So we'll hand out to everyone. And again, uh, ask for your patience. It's going to take a little bit before those results um, are made available. Thank you. Thank you. And if there's no communication, number 11 is adjournment. So moved. Support. The motion by Mr. Wadsworth, supported by Ms. Makowski for adjournment. Mr. Wadsworth? Yes. Ms. Makowski? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. We are adjourned. Thank you.